Solo Hunters Finding Wild podcast is presented by Global Rescue, the world's leading membership organization providing medical, security, evacuation, travel risk, and crisis management services. These are the people on the ground who have your back and who have the resources to get you out of any sticky situation should the need arise. And with Global Rescue membership starting at only 119 bucks, there's no reason to travel without it. Go to globalrescue.com slash solo hunter to find out more. And if you do decide that you need a plan, tell them that I sent you and use promo code SOLO at checkout. Big hole. Put on some frozen boots. Go tread some frozen tundra. We've got two days of solid pack. Stay on this backside until I get right on freaking top of it. We literally have 45 minutes till the plane is supposed to land. On this week's episode, I am at the ranch of my new friend, Mark Groupie of the Community Show YouTube channel and Mark Groupie Outdoors podcast. Mark invited Hudson and I to come down a few months ago to hunt hogs and turkeys with him and my friend Charles Whitwam, where Hudson jump shot his first turkey. Now we're back and we're hoping for Hudson to take down his first hog. Topics of discussion are ear holing hogs with a 243, bow hunting opportunities all year round, honing your skills on hogs, reasons to get outdoors more often, cure for the bow hunting bug, getting your kids outdoors any way you can, stories and favorite hunts from myself, Mark Groupie, and Charles Whitwam. This week of hunting was amazing, and I can't wait to share the film and episode with all of you soon, but for now, I hope you enjoy this podcast conversation and make some effort to follow Mark along on the Community Show Instagram and YouTube, and Charles Whitwam or Shadow Trekker on his YouTube and Instagram channels as well. This episode of the Solo Hunter podcast is being hosted by Hudson Ross Burnett, recent uh, pig, HRB, pig, HR, pig HRB. slayer. Yeah, a herb. Herb. <laughs> herb. Little yes. herb. Which, uh, <laughs> coincidentally, Mark Groupie here, who is also part of the part of this podcast, host. Host uh, with the most or yeah. least. or Also has a son, Hudson. Yeah. yeah. What's his middle? Hudson. Patrick. HPG. I'm surprised you remember. Hibiga. I'm surprised. I had to think you told me. What's his name? What's his name? Yeah. yeah, Mark is the sire of a brood of nine. So uh, the other herd, it takes sometimes it takes a while to to remember their ages. To sort remember their ages and yeah. speaks to the volume of your uh, virility and strength as, uh, <coughs> as a man. <laughs> <laughs> We've got uh, Charles. Wh- we better keep this pretty on the up and up. Hudson is only 15. So We're just talking about only horses. barely 15. Uh, yeah, Charles Whitwam once again uh, on the podcast. Glad to have you back. Glad to have you back. Good time last time. Yeah, yeah. So we're back in California. We had to do a redemption hunt after Hudson's turkey slang mm-hmm. and uh, pig tour mm-hmm. the first trip. Yep. So. And now it's time to get a pig. Pig tour. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're are we, are we doing this pod this episode retroactively, or we're already letting the cat out of the bag that he hammered a huge, yeah. a, a good old hog. Yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> made a fine shot he did <laughs> that pig went nowhere well, that's last thing i can remember charles saying the night before was uh let's ear hole the next yeah one. <laughs> shoot him in the head if you're gonna use a 243 shoot him in the head and that's yeah. what hudson did <laughs> that, that's true so yeah a 243 can in my experience you can kill a pig with it obviously um but i've seen big boars completely soak up a 243 round really yeah so um when people shoot them broadside or whatnot. And, and it's not like it's not going to kill it. It's just you might not get a pass through. The wound channel isn't going to be really that big. And if it runs off and you don't see it fall over, it's a hard blood trail to follow. Yeah. You, know, you know what we should have done? We should have at least taken photos or some video of the shield on the, the rib cage of, of a hole. Maybe we'll do that one after you and I kill one, <clears throat> right? There you go. It's it's out there hanging. It's amazing how thick but, yeah. that was when you're pe- yeah, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. off. So, so Hudson... Uh, do you want to tell a little bit about your hunt? Um, um, or do you want Mark to tell the whole story? I'll tell half of it. Only half? Yeah. First mm-hmm. half or second half? The half where you pulled the The second trigger. half. Which half mm-hmm. was your, what, like, I want to hear this from your perspective. The whole thing? 
Yeah. Okay. Starting from the drive down here and, you know, listen to your dad's old crappy music. It actually, it was talk radio on the way down here. <laughs> um. So we got here. Then we went out. And this morning, um, we saw a couple pigs just like an hour after we started hiking. It was like 5.30 when we saw them. It was early because the nights are short. Got like, what, four mm-hmm. hours of sleep last night? Yeah, about. And then another four today? Mm-hmm. Okay. And we saw the pigs. I saw, like, a gray one. It was pretty cool. And then I saw two more by it and then a couple over to the right. So I just picked one off, the gray one, and I, uh, Charles set up the... Um, the Shooting sticks? Yeah, that's what it's... Yeah. And I just shot off them. And my gun kept falling off of it because we had the bad one, the, what's it called? Yeah, we left the, the we had some, the Primo shooting sticks that had the the Y yeah, that he was using notch, yeah. last night. Because I don't have shooting sticks. I, I'm i so, I'm a selfish hunter. I'm only set up for myself. I don't have what I need for Hudson. But. So SH doesn't ta- stand for solo hunter. It stands no. for a selfish hunter. No, it turns out it's, it's that's a, that would be a good one. That would selfish be a good hunter. One. It's, it's generally... It means I have no friends and I like to hunt is what solo hunter is yeah. really. Mm-hmm. But so we didn't have that. So he had a we we strapped a bag, a shooting bag on top of a tripod. Is basically yeah. essentially what we did. So you're, that's what you're talking about was kind of ganky and yeah. your gun was sliding off. And then, um, I saw it. It was it was a pretty clear shot. It wasn't too dark. And then I just. Charles gave me the go, and I just shot, and it just went right down, just like, boom. Yeah, in his tracks. Mm-hmm. It was good. Yeah, it was awesome. That Stone pig. cold killer. Now, and the colors on that pig, wasn't that a gorgeous animal? Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That was, I think that's what took took me the most, because a lot of times, I think we might have talked about this before, the, the style of hog, I guess, if that's the mm-hmm. way to describe what the hogs are here. You know, sure. they're, they're feral, right? Um. A little bit of Eurasian stock in him, maybe at some point. Yeah. This this hog looked like a Eurasian boar. I mean, he looked like a gigantic javelina. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you notice her t- tails, they got that big old long horse tail. You know, it's yeah. not not any little curly thing or short thing. It's uh, just about dragging the ground. And as he gets older, you know, he's two and a half or so years old. As he gets older, that thing will be dragging the ground and, really? and uh but uh, yeah, he he was not that old, not that old of his pig, and his ears weren't all torn up until Hudson put a bullet in him. <laughs> but uh, literally ear hold it, literally ear hold it. Yeah. And uh, um, but when we rinsed it off, <clears throat> they, those colors were amazing. How they popped out the oh. the the roan and the and then the silver and everything like that, and it was, it was a pretty cool looking, pretty cool looking pig. What are you gonna do with it, Hudson? Um, I'm going to make it like a rug thingy that you could wear. Rug wasn't the word that you used. <laughs> well, a wearing sh- rug. Can we make shirt. a shirt out of it? Yeah. <laughs> a then jacket. You, or and a then you're like, uh, a cape, I think a, is yeah. a cape is yeah. what he was saying. Can we make it a, can we turn it into a cape? And then he, skin? and then he wants to wear a Burger King crown There you go. and answer the front door. Not at Halloween, just anytime. Just yeah. randomly. Just any, just yeah. randomly. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. We're not making this like up. That. This is literally no, what came true. out of his mouth. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and you got to tell it. You say what <laughs> came out of your mouth. Do you even remember? I said that. <laughs> I said that. We're really good at remembering the ad- what adolescents say. Uh, I could tell. So we have it completely caped out. You can get it. You can get a shoulder mount. Actually, you can get a full body mount. Basically, right now. So yeah. you can. You can. It's up to your taxidermist and what you guys decide you want to do. It's ready to rock and roll right now. What did you just, you you kind of already you're pretty headstrong about it. Mm-hmm. I'm trying Fair. to talk you into getting a shoulder mount because that no. pig is awesome. But you want to just tan the whole hide, right? Is yeah. That what you're saying? Well, maybe. No, I think it's a good idea. You do what you want to do. This is your pig. You know, you worked for it. You earned it. And mm-hmm. It wasn't like you know, for if if any of you guys out there that listen missed the first podcast that that Charles and I and Hudson did and the the trip that we came down before. It wasn't just a one day hunt, you know. We put in a lot of miles, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. over the two trips. Um, what, is this four or five days? I, I don't remember. Um, what 
How many? So we did three like solid, three five. and a half solid or, or four the first trip, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. And then. And we saw pigs. So, saw pigs. So we basically. pigs. They just. Yeah. So you guys came back last night. Mm-hmm. So it was a different story. The, the, the environment was different. Totally different. Yeah. yeah. The, the, Green and lush before. The water and food was a little bit more limited now. Extremely and distracting because the turkeys were everywhere. So yeah. it was like, are we turkey hunting? Or are we pig yeah. hunting? Are we yeah. turkey? Oh, oh, no, we're coyote hunting. <laughs> the timing was just better. Last well, night we got in the pigs. This morning we got in the pigs. But yeah, as far as that pig goes that you shot, it wasn't your classic black feral hog. Mm-hmm. It, it looked like it when you shot it. Right, yeah. they all look kind of black. They, it's um, how they usually look. Yeah, I saw it and I, I shot it because it looked pretty cool. And it did have it had some mud yeah. on it, a few different, yeah. Yeah. But then when we walked up, when we walked up to it, that's one of the more unique pigs that mm-hmm. I've seen. Yeah. Um, and it really does look like a giant javelina. Same it coloration, a strange. Of the javelina. Yeah. yeah. Long hair. Right. Just a cool face. So, as you're saying, a, a two-year-oldish pig. Yeah, that'd be my guess looking yeah. at his test. But but he weighed two hundred and twenty five pounds. Yeah, and that's an official weigh in. That's official. That's an weigh-in. official that's not weigh-in. A that, guesstimate. That, that yeah. is on a certified cattle scale. Now that, wait, uh, if it was a guesstimate, a Facebook guesstimate, what would people say? If it was a three hundred pound, it, oh yeah, depends, oh, depends oh, on yeah. which picture we post. At least, yeah. yeah. Oh, the We've got a couple photos work. that we took, and that Charles. I mean, you, you look at that, and you're like, "That's a three hundred pound pig or more." Charles is yeah. good at making those pictures. He he, <laughs> he turns his normal forty five pound pig oh. in, into a nice hundred and fifty pound. Definitely, pig. yeah, hundred yeah. percent. The one that really set, shows it legitimately is when Hudson lays down next to it, and Hudson's mm-hmm. yeah five one five two. Five one probably. Then, literally, that pig was about that long, you know, almost yeah. from snout without to its butt. legs stretched out. Yeah, with his legs stretched out, I'm, he's he's certainly taller than, not as tall as Mark, but taller than everyone else. Well, Mark's like yeah, six, eight feet, six nine, uh, nine, six, nine, six ten at least, at least. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> what what grade are you in, Hudson? Uh, I'm going into my sophomore year. Into your sophomore year, I was five foot tall when I was a freshman in high school. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. Five oh, foot tall, ninety nine pounds. Five foot tall. That's wow. exactly what I was as a freshman. And look at me. When did you do the? Like, oh, you're five four. Hundred and ninety nine pounds and five four. <laughs> <laughs> when did you do the growing? Uh, I just every year just tacked on right three after years. That. Yep. Freshman grew three years. Sophomore three years. Junior three years, senior three years, and we mean and three years. Three, I inches. mean three years, three years. <laughs> <inches. laughs> like what's it? Like you three years. Benjamin Button. Yeah, what I are got, we doing? I got, I I got stoned for a month one night. <laughs> <laughs> you got to gotta give him the senility gap. Here. Yeah, he, he is old. Yeah, yeah, three 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 inches every year. Three, yep, three inches That's... every year, and then and then after I graduated, put tacked on about another inch, a little plus. Grow a lot of growing pains. That uh, hurt. Yeah, I don't know. It just seemed normal. So, yeah, I guess, you know. You grew a foot and a half in. in you no, know, I grew well, well, a, f- a well, foot, how, and, foot and an inch in. Oh, how tall are you? I'm just a little over 6'1". Oh, is that it? Is that you home? honestly look taller than I thought you were 6'3". No, it's because yeah. most people exaggerate. Most guys exaggerate their height. I mean, it's surprising the number of six foot three people that I'm taller than. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm six three. I just thought you were tall. I thought for sure you were six three. Oh. Yeah. Wow. I'm just that short. <laughs> Everyone just looks taller. <laughs> Where yeah. it's height quit it, mattering after high school. Yeah, yeah. Right. After you after you get married or pull you know, you've pulled the last chick that you're ever gonna have to pull, your height doesn't matter mm-hmm. anymore. Well, well when I wear my hashtag Kenetrek Mountain Extremes, then yeah. I those do put I, no, I, those I, do put I, a few I, inches I, on. An inch. Yeah. So, um, every inch counts. So you, you, but Hudson, he's kind of going through a growth spurt. The thing I've noticed about him is he's starting to fill out a lot. Yeah. Like the other day he came to me and he's like, uh, dad, can I have some of your protein powder? Cause I've been going to the gym and bulking up, you know, turning into kind of a hulkish freakish Freak figure. nature. And, right. And he's like, dad, can I have some of your protein powder? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I don't care. Whatever. And then at like two hours later, he comes up to me and he's all, Hey Dad, do you know what? Do you know why I asked you for your oh protein powder? <laughs> and I'm thinking, yeah, here it comes. He's like, 
Because I just lifted weights. <laughs> he went and lifted weights with his buddies. His height. Out of boy. Yeah. How did you? How did you take the protein powder? Put it in your cereal. In my in like a shake with just milk. With milk, of course. <laughs> with milk, of <laughs> yeah. course. That's on your, sort of a cereal. On your cereal, yeah. Yeah. But he's bulking up. He's had a six pack since he was like a year and a half, and uh, now he's starting to fill that out. So if he keeps that six pack and fills out like he's doing, there you go. Heart throb. Stud. That's now it. that you got this big bore. Stud level just That's shot right. up as well. Oh, Don't you, forget about that. You better not share that in a group text. You, I mean, yeah. these girls that are yeah. after you are just not going to stop. Now. It'd be hashtag HUD the stud. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. There it is. It's already started. <laughs> hog huddy. <laughs> huddy hog. That's what we called you, huh? Yeah. Ah. Anything else you want to say about your little the hunt and how it all happened? Like... How how excited you were or any of that kind of thing? I was very excited. I probably didn't show that much emotion, but I was very excited. I think I still have, like, adrenaline in me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you <laughs> Not should. Not in me, but adrenaline. You That's a good feeling. That's a really cool feeling, especially after what you went through the first trip, you know, hiking a lot. Hunting a lot, good experiences, and then last night having a close close call and just not not having everything happen, and then to get there and to make the kind of shot that you made today, you know, and just have it drop like that's that's an overwhelming feeling. That feels good. Mm-hmm. Yep, felt good for me, like just watching it. And I intentionally mic'd you guys up so that it could keep the audio away from me for one because I'm a heavy breather when I'm hiking up hiking trying to keep up with you guys. <laughs> But mostly so that you wouldn't get me, you know, my commentary talking. I just wanted to hear you guys. So it was pretty cool. It was neat listening back to it. Mm. Yeah, that was amazing. Definitely. Mm-hmm. What, do you, what do you have uh, this fall scheduled? That's in anything? Um, mule deer hunt, right? Mule deer. Yep. He drew a, a good deer tag. Same. You had the same deer tag last year. And then we couldn't. Oh, yeah. We ended up not being able to go because my last year's schedule was crazy. But. Mm-hmm. Oh, where's that? In Nevada. In Nevada. Yep. Oh, you drew. I didn't know you got that. That's cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's exciting. Yeah. Are you using the same uh, 243, same gun? Um, probably. Prob- no. 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 I think we'll use my gun. Okay. Which one's that? It's the Christensen Ridgeline, the 6.5 Creedmoor. Oh, okay. Not oh. because it's a 6.5 Creedmoor. And that's, oh, you're a Creedmoor that's guy. Like the, yeah. Creedmoor you know, guy. Here we go. Oh, I'm, yeah. Creedmoor guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm far from being a hipster, all right? Yeah. A hipster hunter. Nothing wrong with the 6.5. However, <laughs> Riley Warwood, you know, told me that I talked me into getting a 6.5. He, want, he was suggesting the 6.5 284, I think is what his daughter was shooting. But at the time, those were out of stock with Christensen, so we ended up just getting a six five. And I traded off a pretty high end rifle for that rifle. So what? Uh, a different rifle. <laughs> that'll be uh, that'll be great for you, Hudson. Actually, mm. yeah, and that's... it doesn't. You know, it's not. It kicks a bunch or anything, but you can pack a deadly punch, get out a little bit further for Plus, sure. That rifle's experience. It's killed a doll sheep. It's killed mm. three black tail or two black tail deer. It's killed a caribou reindeer, and it's killed a whole bunch of uh, rocks. So, <laughs> I can't think of anything else it's killed. So it's all ready for you. And soon to be a mule deer. Yeah. Have you killed a deer yet? No, not yet. All this right. was his first big game animal. This was. Yeah. Mark, you uh, you, you got him his first turkey here yep. a, few, a month ago, and then his hog. Gosh, Sweet. that was only a month ago, wasn't it? Might have been two months. I don't know. I lose track no, of time this time. It had. It was three months. Was it three months ago? No, no. Let's Couldn't. see. Turkey season. It was April. April. Yeah. What is yeah, it right now? April. June. 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 Yeah, two, two months, months ago. ago. Yeah, Almost month. exactly. Wow. Yeah. Yep. We're hoping to get him a deer. The dang thing. The thing about it is, w- between school and extracurricular activities, um, you know, all that stuff just gets in the way. Well, it's really been kind of dis. Yeah. Not disappointing because it's a whole different level of life for me as he's aged. But he, when he was young, he used to be with me everywhere. And he would travel yeah. with me and do all sorts of things. And before he got into school, we'd go on a ton of trips. And even then, younger, in younger grades, he would still travel and do a lot of things. Same with my kid. But, we skied an ungodly amount of uh, days a year. Because oh, when yeah. he was in elementary school, it's like, ah, I can pull him out of school. It's not that big of a deal. Right. Starts middle school and homework I can't even do his math. Oh yeah, man! You can't. You can't miss third grade. He's go, no. He's going in the eighth now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. 
Uh, I can't do that math either, but whatever. Um, uh, he can't miss school anymore. Yeah, so yeah. this whole year, best snow of the year, I never took him out of school to go skiing. We always have season passes, and it's like, man, this is – it's rough. A lot of stuff can Gotta come up, responsible. too. Like in Hudson's case this year, he ended up getting, you know, some – sicknesses and stuff and you actually maxed out your number of sick days before you'd have to or days missed school before you'd have to i was either do summer school 0.5 so half a day away i I missed 17.5 days wow true no fault of his own you know the kid just got sick just got got some things so had we taken those days to go hunting you know it could have been a a life-changing situation you know in a lot of ways so right so it's not – we haven't really put hunting as a forefront and as the yeah. priority for him. Yeah. Like, you know, an irresponsible myself wanted to do. But How far away is the – how long are you going to hunt the uh, that unit? And um, how far away is that? So I'm going to go in August because I don't – my hunt, my first hunt in August isn't – I'm not going to go until the 15th. And so this hunt opens the 10th. So I'll probably go the first week of August, pick a few days in there. I think you'll still be out of school, won't you? Oh. Um, so we're going to go do maybe. some scouting. Because he could technically bow hunt it. The, the way that the junior program works in Nevada is they get all three seasons. So hmm. he could go and, and do archery um, August 10th through September 5th. And then it rolls over into rifle, or excuse me, muzzleloader at that point for another two or three weeks. And then it rolls over into rifle season for the last part of October, I think till like November 5th or something. Hmm. And that area there, I know it really, really well for the early season stuff. So I wish, you know, he was more practiced and adept at archery and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, just not feeling comfortable at that point to do that. And plus, you you just got an obsession with a rifle. You mm-hmm. like that trigger emotion, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he likes the yeah. hammer. <laughs> oh, I gotta, I gotta. When we go out shooting, I have to make sure I only bring one box because if I bring more than one box of ammo, they'll shoot more than one yeah, box of ammo. They're, they're all gone, burning out my barrel. Yeah. In California here, you have to remember next time you come, you have to have non lead, non toxic ammunition. That's what we well, have now. No, we, we have now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I made them yeah. get it already because yeah. didn't we have to do that already? I thought it was no. all ready for... No, it's uh, first. I think it's 1st of July, I think, or so, okay. 19th of July or some weird day or something like that. Really? Yeah. There's they're, 45 they're, bucks I didn't need to spend, Charles. Yeah, and I made you spend that. There's, uh, well, there's certain areas, though. Yeah. It depends on what area you are right. in California. So I just I just tell everybody, do it. Yeah. Actually, actually it's funny. Way. Right here where we sit, you're fine shooting lead right now. If you go 400 yards that way... You're not fine. In really? Madera. Yeah. In okay. Madera County. So there you go. Interesting. Yeah. And w- so where we were at probably was Madera County. No. It? No. We were, we were, we're close Madera. to it, but we we're could hunt in Madera. We could have. Yeah. This podcast episode is also brought to you by Prime Archery. Prime bows have some of the most advanced technologies and are backed by the most advanced warranty in the business. Check out the new line of Synergy Logic bows with axle to axle lengths from 31 to 39 inches. Parallel cams that virtually eliminate cam lean. Synergy grip technology that provides unparalleled balance in hand. The Flexus AR roller guard to reduce side load and riser torque while shooting. And much, much more. Prime bows will make you a better shot. Also brought to you by G5 Outdoors and the G5 lineup of broadheads. From the all steel fixed blade Montec. And my favorite Striker V2 replaceable fixed blade. To T-Bone's favorite Dead Meat. And Waddell's favorite Havoc expandable broadheads. 100% steel, 100% tough, and now with the new BMPs or ballistic match points. Tuning your bow to broadheads just got that much easier. G5 Outdoors is an American made company. G5 products are designed to hunt. the condors you can see them they you know it's, it's so they don't eat the eat the eat the lead and you can see the condors fly the county line yeah. because they know the lead, lead there, could, there could be lead over on this side and, of course. and there's no lead on that side so you see they fly right up and down that county line looking for carrion well thankfully the wise you know public officials in, in california have now fixed that so they the condors that, can so fly freely yeah and now eat yeah. freely yeah right? after after july i think they'll probably we'll be start, seeing them over here yeah they'll they'll start testing <clears throat> the waters of yeah. this great county <laughs> yeah that's that's great that's so nice of them to do yeah that. it would be nice to see the condors here yeah so we complied early then we complied okay. early. that's it, fine. it's all right i'm glad we did yeah 
It did well. So what are you going to do now that your your tags filled? So you're hunting, right? Yeah, I guess and I get to I get hunt hunting? now. Maybe, maybe not. We've yeah. got some killers in camp now between Mark and we Charles. Did. There's definitely some hunting that's going to happen. Yeah. Some bow hunting that's going to happen Let's starting tonight. Let the bodies hit the floor. Yes. Man, if we all three hammered hogs tonight, do you know how long of a chaos chaos. You say, do you know? night that would be? Not chaos. For me, but for you. <laughs> Not, Not for, for you. you. Are you going to stay here? You can, oh, you're... you mean no. so we could we helped you, but you don't help us? Is that, how it, wor- Is that how it works? I'll that's usually how I work. I'm like, God, oh, sorry, yeah. guys. I got to go home. Mm-hmm. That was the first words out of mom's house. When you coming home? Yeah. Out of her mouth? No. When you're coming home, Tim, I don't know when. I think we're, I mean, there's a good chance of at least one of us getting something, I think. Someone should get on to something Mm -hmm. anyway, I think. It looks good right now. So you're saying, you're saying the hogs are pretty active right now compared to what you've been seeing the last few weeks. It's like. Well, I was here uh, a week ago and um, I had a client and the very first evening we got on the pigs and he injured it. Uh, We couldn't find it. So. Essentially, his hunt was over for over in that section. We didn't want to overpressure it because you were coming. Right. Oh, thank and you. Appreciate so that. we did come over here on this side. We actually did see some pigs, um, but I just didn't spend any time over there. So I really, I spent one evening and that's been it since uh, Mother's Day. So I don't, oh, wow. I, I didn't know what it looked like. I didn't really know what to do. So last night we did our, our route, seeing those pigs. That was great. And, you know, they were kind of where we wanted them to be you know around the food sources and then this morning we got into a bunch of pigs and they were in the food sources again so we can target that that was the whole what we talked about two months ago was you come back in june we can probably target it a little bit better because we'll be able to you know go to the food sources or go to the water holes or whatever and and it's worked out so it's since i've been here this has been the easiest getting on pigs since i've been here this year the nice. fields have yeah. really picked over since you've been here. Oh yeah, they look a hundred percent different. Yeah, they're yeah. pretty pretty wiped out. Yeah, it's also the best time I think to. Um... Oh, and then I did shoot a pig last week. So yeah, that yeah that was good too. Under his hunter. <laughs> that's what. Yeah, that's what I was surprised. I was like man, man, telling me the story. I'm like <laughs> interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, sort of. Hey Jimmy, why don't you go over here? You go, over you go here. right up over I'll there. I'll just go here. I'm I'll just tell you what. I was surprised that that happened. I really next was. to the river and check yeah. this spot out. Yeah, I get you lucky. Know, I, I get lucky. I, I had a similar thing happen one year. I wasn't so unethical as you were, but uh, <laughs> I had um, I had some people come in. I, I rented a ranch in in Colorado and had a line of people come in every week. And I had a tag for it too, and I was going to hunt when they're done. Well, my my first week guy came, and he was out of shape, and the nine thousand foot altitude there just just killed him doing nothing. And we finished the first morning, and he says, "I got to leave. I got to go home." So he he booked a plane ticket that after for that afternoon and i i took him to montrose and he he flew home you know the, the next day i i'm sitting there and i'm watching i'm going gosh can't you just stay i, I know i can just put you in the stand 300 yards from the cabin here and the elk are just crossing out there and he goes no i'm gonna die if i stay here. and and so for uh, i had people come in uh, six days later for the next four days i had to watch these a five and six point elk jump out right in front of the tree stand and i had a tag for it and i just couldn't bring myself to go 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 sit in that stand and then then the people show up and they'd go yeah has there been elk around yeah there was some elk coming right through here and i killed them i just (laughs) yeah i'd go over well yeah Yeah. so kind of like what charles did you know shooting it out from under his client did you make your client gut it and pack it out too (laughs) he was super super i actually played a joke on him so he wanted me the hunt he he Uh, knew he was giving you a bad time he was super Super grateful that uh, that he could stay and continue the hunt or whatever, and he he did want me to hunt. He's like, man, why don't you go? You have your bow. Why don't you go hunt? I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna put you where we last saw pigs on this side. And that's what happened. So I sent him over there, and I'm, I'm thinking, I'm gonna go hunt where I've never hunted before. So down by the river over oh, here, yeah. I'm gonna go over there, and uh, I'm just driving my jeep along, and I see a pig cross the river. Like man, that wasn't a cow. That was a pig. So it was just—it happened super fast. It jumped out of the jeep and just started running. 
I had the cover of the river noise and the wind was perfect. And I saw the pig making its way up the, up the hillside Threw my GoPro on, turned that on and I come up the hill and they're all right there 11 yards away and, you know, smoke a pig. And, uh, so I dragged that out, take some pictures, get it in my Jeep, which was, which was fun to try and lift the pig by yourself and put it in the back of the Jeep. I barely pulled that off and then went and picked him up. So I had the pig in the back seat and I pull up to, uh, I pull up to the, the client and we're talking, did you see anything? I'm like, yeah, I saw something. What about you? I was trying to change the subject. Uh, I'm like, Hey, well just get in, you know, throw your stuff in the back and throw your stuff in the back. And he goes to the back of the Jeep, starts putting stuff in there and, you know, he finally sees it and he, he <laughs> jumps, <laughs> he got <Yeah>. scared <laughs> and, uh, you know, but he was super cool about it. And, um, I, you know, I tagged it and I, I quartered it up and everything and, uh, I sent him home with the meat. Nice. So he, he was, you know, ecstatic about that. And, uh, yeah, I wish I would have brought him over there cause that would have been, that's the way it always works though. It would have yeah. been an easy shot for him. He was a, he was a new bow hunter mm-hmm. and it would have been a pretty easy deal for him, but it didn't work out that way. You can't. You, but, there's no way you can tell. I mean, these pigs, can, they could be anywhere. Same with deer or yeah. elk or anything else. They yeah. could be yeah. anywhere. Yep. Yeah. No, they're, they're. So now it's my new favorite spot over that's there. Your, it's a great spot, and it's beautiful, too. <laughs> it it's really probably, is. It it's never, probably the most beautiful part of the ranch. It's incredible. The Indian yeah. grinding rocks down yeah. there and everything. and The river's crossable. and yeah. I'll tell you what, the temperature down there is five degrees warmer than it is up here, it felt like. Maybe not. Maybe there's probably some air pockets where it's cooler, but when we drove down there today, yeah, it was hot. Well, in the morning, it'll be 10 to 20 degrees cooler because that cold, the cold air will set, set, settles down in there, and you'll be driving down in the morning, you'll feel it. Especially in the, notice it especially in the fall when it's still uh when it when it's still warm outside but it's cooling off in the mornings and that cooler goes down there and it'll be you know it'll be 52 degrees when you leave it and, and you'll get down there and it'll be 36 and i felt hot today maybe that was just the heat coming off of the ranger because hudson was riding it so hard it does. 30, 35 miles an hour down the dang down the mountain. I was, I was not. they do get hot for sure yeah that thing was putting off some heat Today was amazing though, being with, so I was with you, you know, we hunted hard two months ago Yeah. and we could bait, we could sort of hunt all day. We hunted a lot. It was Mm -hmm. definitely more than mornings and and evenings. Hudson wouldn't let us not hunt all day. Yeah. He pushed us. And then, uh, today it finally came together, you know, Mm -hmm. and I'm really happy that it, if I was to, I'm happy that it didn't happen day one like that. Cause I think, cause you guys are both new pig hunters and and tim is as well and he sort of had an idea of of pig hunting and we're hunting on really nice beautiful private property but we had to hunt pretty hard yeah for these pigs so Mm -hmm. you know take that and think about public land hunting which you talked about doing it's it's, we got a tough hunt out of it and and then you ended up getting a trophy boar so i mean this is the best way for this to happen you went through ups and downs and you know we're sweating and being cold. I don't know. I think it was cold when we were here for, I don't remember, but we just went through a lot of, we went, we, you had a hunt, Yeah. you know, you missed a pig, you went through all that stuff and then you dropped the pig and it, and that's the cool part is we didn't know how big this pig was. We didn't really, we knew it was a good pig. We walked up on it this morning and we're like, holy cow, this is a really good pig. Look at the tusk sticking out. Look at how big this thing's body is. It was a stout pig. Yeah. And a really, really unique pig. I mean, you that's a, you know, um, you might not ever get one like that again. You might, you might not. I don't know. It's a good pig. Yeah. I'm jealous. That might, I think that's bigger body wise than any pig I've ever shot. It's close. And I've been doing it for a while. Just a pretty pig. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought, you know, honestly, when we lined this all out, I was thinking, ah, this will be a slam dunk. We'll roll into camp. You know, we'll roll down there. Hudson will shoot a, shoot a pig. I'll shoot a pig. You know, it's, it's yeah. private property. This can be easy. It's, yeah. This way it is. But, and it could be, it could be, could yeah, be. it could happen. Yeah. If you showed up on a day like today and then oh, we're done. Yeah. yeah that was, was it. the first morning and walked out there and, and, uh, then you'd come back and be disappointed because it, five, you know what I mean? Five thirty, and yeah. you killed your pig and yeah. No, it was good. It's good when you put some time into it and it, and it works out for sure. 
That's, it's a lot of fun. The best. I, I think, you know, I would highly recommend it to people. And, and now, you know, states like, like Texas has opened it up to where you don't even have to have a license or a tag to hunt hogs down there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it just gives a person something to do outside of the typical hunting season. And it's not. You know, even if you don't look at it as, oh, you know, it's just just a pig. I'm a big game hunter. I'm I'm only hunt deer and elk and buffaloes and yeah. whatever else. You know, just get sure. out and go and hunt pigs and just at least experience doing something outside of the norm or outside of your your comfort zone a little bit. And you might yeah. actually stink and enjoy it. You know, it's well, most of the year is what we consider the off season. So you can't hunt deer or elk, and then the right. rest of the time's the off season, right? Yeah. Uh, it you can always hunt pigs. And that just, that keeps you bow hunting. It keeps you, you still got to hit them. You still got to be accurate. You still got to pay actually attention kinda, to wind. You still got to yeah, yeah. hunt. And, you know? and, and the way, you know, pigs are shorter and they're in taller grass or whatever. You actually sometimes have to be a little more, um, you can't just shoot the pig in the body. There's a smaller mm-hmm. kill area than there is, I would say, on a, on a deer. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a heck of a lot less forgiving than a deer or an elk, I, I, would, I would say. So that keeps your skills up if you can continue to do that any any day of the year. Yeah. You know, do it in February, do it in March, do it. You know, you'll figure out if, how your bow is. You'll figure out you know your get your nerves down, whatever it is you're dealing, your equipment, new equipment, all that stuff. That's that's what I like about it. Yeah, it's constant. There's no off season. Yeah, yeah. constantly hunting. If it wasn't for pigs, I I wouldn't hunt. Well, wouldn't 140 days out <laughs> yeah. of the year, <laughs> right? Because you yeah. can, <laughs> right? But that makes you a better hunter. At, in all areas of, of hunting, I think, you know, yeah. when you go, yeah. I, I think the same, same thing for whitetail hunting, you know, um, any chance I could get when I'm out there, or when I would used to have a place in, in Oklahoma and hunt, just stack up the does, you know, as many does as you can. Cause it, it's good management for one, but also mm-hmm. it just hones your skills. Sure. You know, if you're, if you're into shooting whistle pigs or prairie dogs or rock chucks or whatever else, stack them up, you know, you're not going to hurt the hurt anything but right. just gives you gives you that much experience and that much right you know more to go by but and the pigs taste really good and you never know what you're gonna get this is a fat pig yeah he's a pretty fat pig yeah, yeah. no and he's he's gonna be excellent eating i think yeah they and they and like today they all look different you don't know some of them look like werewolves some of them look like a farm pig some of them look like a feral some of them look eurasian whatever it's you know you never know what you're gonna get yeah there's oh, there's there's character to them I'm a little bit nervous about it now because no matter what I shoot, it's probably not going to be as <laughs> good as Hudson's, and he's gonna he's gonna make sure I hear. Yeah, that. Do you remember yeah that hunt? definitely. Do you remember that hunt where I shot a big pig and you didn't? Yeah, I, I might not even hunt tonight. Maybe I'll just make dinner. Maybe I'll just fire up the barbecue <laughs> yeah. for you guys when you get back. You better hunt. <laughs> Is that hot tub working out there, Mark? You, you uh, could, I think it's cold. But you could uh, pull the uh, perfect, which would be a good thing. Perfect. Yeah. You could pull the tenderloins off that that pig and cook yeah. those up. That'd be oh, pretty yeah, good actually. That. No, it'll be fun. I'm excited to get out and do some hunting, do some sweating and all that kind of thing. Um, Hudson, any other, any other thoughts you want to sh- part share with us? Mm, nope. Yeah. Six 30 now. When do you think we should get in the woods? Seven 15, maybe. I don't know. When's the uh, eight, eight 50 or something is legal shooting light. Something yeah, like that. Somewhere right close so to I there, say, yeah. I say we leave the house at about eight 30. Oh, okay. I was way off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just jerking you. I'm just jerking you. Pedal to the metal. He's still the thing. The cool thing about it, he's still excited. Like, do you know what the, the very first words out of his mouth after he shot the pig was? Do you yes. remember, Charles? Um, maybe not the very first. I think I it think was it was the actually very the very first comprehensive sentence after he picked his. I can't chin remember. Up. I was so excited. I I was were. so excited when that pig dropped. It was it was just that's the coolest thing for me. Yeah, here I'm gonna I'm gonna put. Oh wait, you know what? I didn't. I cut the audio right after your heavy breathing. <laughs> Charles's first words were, "Oh, you stoned him, yeah. stone mm-hmm. cold, dropped him, or whatever." Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Hudson <laughs> turned, and after he caught his breath, what was your first words? You remember? Your turn. Your turn, Dad. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I was remember like, that. That's yes. hilarious. That's awesome. That is awesome. So he was immediately thinking of of his old man. Oh, his old man. You know? And I, I think you could have uh, grabbed that rifle and. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that definitely yeah. could have happened. Sure. Yeah, I'm not. Who wouldn't enjoy the moment as yeah, much for? No. Yeah. I uh, 
I did a lot of killing last year with the rifle, like a lo- all the hunts I lined out pretty much. I, I hunted with a bow, and I killed one animal with my bow last year, deer, but I, I stacked it up with the rifle. And I've kind of got my fill for, I think, for <laughs> yeah, a while. Yeah, your bloodlust done. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, the, the freezer was filled. We're still whittling through that. But uh, honestly, I've always been a passionate bow hunter to begin with. But, um, you know, just the nature of what I've, how life has evolved and then also – marketing my some of my products that i have and that like it makes sense to to rifle hunt a lot sure um but man i've got the bow hunting bug right now yeah I mean, just the bow shooting bug i love going out and shooting i love throwing the target in the back of my truck and going up on the hill and just even if it's a dozen arrows you know or a, a couple dozen or a hundred arrows i just i'm loving shooting the bow right now um and so every hunt that i have lined out this year I don't have any rifle hunts lined out and unless really? I draw to, unless I draw my antelope tag in, in Montana, everything is an archery hunt mm, and, cool. um, I can still hunt mule deer over the counter in Idaho with a rifle in October, but I'm, I'm not going to, like, I think I was talking with you, Charles, that mm-hmm. I have, have no desire to hunt mule deer in October. I want to hunt them in August and September and December. You know, that's kind of, yeah, you were I saying that. that. Yeah. And those two seasons are both archery. So for me, it's all about the bow. It's all about the yeah. bow and shooting arrows mm-hmm. right now. This podcast is also brought to you by Onyx Hunt, creators of the most comprehensive digital mapping system for hunters. Download the Hunt app from the iTunes or Google Play Store and use promo code SOLO for your 20% discount at checkout. Also brought to you by BlackOvis.com. Search the word Solo Hunter to see all the great Solo Hunter branded gear that they carry. Link to my recommended product guide and gear list. Order yourself a custom built arrow setup from their custom shop or just browse the website for all the latest gear. Are you shooting a bow at all, Hudson? Um, I want to, but not as much as I should. We had him a little bow starting out, a little bear when, when he was young, way littler. And he sh- shot the bear and the recurve a lot. But then as he got old enough, like I jumped right into it. I had Prime. Um, they sent me a Quest bow. It's a Quest Storm, I think it is, or a Quest. I can't remember which which model it is. It's been a few years now. I think it's a Storm. But it's still, um, you know, he's a little on the, the smaller side. He still had a hard time pulling it back and holding it and anchoring and positioning right and we probably should take it down to riley or to you know one of the shops and have somebody work with you on form and holding it and just get it all set up but he was also he's also been growing so much over the last two years draw length and everything changes yeah yeah and so you know just it's more just equipment related wise than and then my time i've been just a crappy father when it comes to that um which I need to change, but we've been focused, spending more time, like I say, pulling the trigger and, and throwing lead than we have shooting bows, but hopefully, hopefully he gets into it a little more. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, he's, he's 14. It's awesome that you're getting him out here doing this. You took a, a pretty relatively good sized trip. You got him out twice mm-hmm. and uh, whichever way you get your kids out, which I got to work on the same thing. You know, we, we've talked about it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's great, you know, whichever way you're doing it, you, yeah. you got them out and you created a new hunter and, There's you know, a- someday we'll have his own kids. So, yeah. I mean, that's the, to talk about the tradition and tradition and furthering, you know, getting new hunters and recruitment and all yeah. that you're doing what you're supposed to do. And there's a lot to um, the physicality of shooting a bow, you know, and, and doing it proficiently and ethically and everything. You, yeah. you not only have to draw a minimum of 40 pounds or 45 pounds, depending on where you're at. And you got to hold that and you got to anchor it. You got to aim and a bow isn't light, you know? And so you've got to have a lot of different muscle groups in a lot of different areas. So mm-hmm. I think it'd be irresponsible of me to, for, of me to force it on him and say, okay, you can, you can hit this target at 20 yards you know, whatever else, but just without having the conditioning and the consistency of shooting, yeah. um, you know, which we'll get there. We'll get to that point. Hunting the West as a kid with a bow that's got to be tough. I mean, I grew up hunting whitetail, so my shots were, I mean, yeah, I was 12 or whatever. It's when I started, but I was in a tree stand, and my shots were 15 to 20 yards max, yeah. Yeah. right? And I'm sitting still. It's still the most exciting, I think, as far as when you oh, start yeah. shaking and all that. I don't think it compares to being in a – if you're in a tree stand, you're, that's the most excite, exciting thing I think you can do. 
Yeah, ambush uh, hunting has its own level of excitement. That's yeah. In, it's off the charts. So dealing with that, for sure. Yeah. But the shots, when are you going to get a 15, 20-yard shot out west with a bow and, yeah. and be a kid? I mean, I guess it could happen, but that's got to be tough. It's rare, I haven't yeah. even thought about that, really. Like, when, yeah. when, do, when do kids really start legitimately getting into bow hunting in the West and, and being successful at it. You, I don't know if you can't be, yeah, if you can't be dialed to 40 yards yeah, and that's, yeah. that's even that's, on the shy side of things. If I look at the last 10 years of my bow hunting, everything is 40 to seven. I would say the shot. average Western hunter bow shot is 60 yards. Probably, probably if between we, 40 you know, and 60. For, yeah. For, for mule deer and elk, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Let's see. I, I've killed 10 of them, I think, uh, 10 elk with my bow, 10, 11. I think the far, farthest one has been 65. The closest one's been 13. Mm -hmm. I think probably my my average, but I still think my average shot's been it's probably right around 30 yards. Mm -hmm. it's, pro it's probably... You know, it's probably the most common. It's Yeah, I mean, the, the elk I've killed have been... 28 and you know 20 some both both in the 20s mm -hmm. but <laughs> there goes my theory but Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah however <laughs> that's just i need to the, be a little more stealthy apparently i, yeah. <laughs> I, I maybe but i would have killed more if i could shoot far i i just yeah. don't like i don't like to shoot very far i yeah I, part of the thing i like about bow hunting is, is is getting close and i had a number of times uh when we're when uh, ryer and i were in colorado videoing our elk hunt last year and we had a milling around about 60 yards and in, in front of us and I had a lot of times where i could have took a 60 to 70 yard shot but it was just like i just don't just don't want to i just don't want to do that i just yeah you know and i i killed ended up killing one at 30 yards and it was great video and great experience and right there in your face and yeah. and it's just uh, to me to me that's that that's the probably most guys probably most way. guys would and i have taken those long shots and i've learned from them and last year i had a shot when i killed the cow i had a shot on a really nice six by six bull he was 65 yards away slight it was downhill and a little bit windy and i i said man i've, I've i can't do it because i've been here before yeah. i've screwed up so i said whatever happens happens i end up killing a, the, a cow at 25 yards yeah and, you know it's like i can hit 65 yards all day long it's it's but i just if it's not right it's not right it, yeah and and that's that's probably one of the only times i haven't i like taking shots i mean i'm not gonna lie <laughs> that i just you know it's hard not to yeah but and i was happy with what i got but i'd say if you were to ask if you take a poll six, probably the average has got to be up there it's 40 50 be. 60 yards I yeah 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 of course, a lot of people aren't as good as hunters as I am, well, and so I was they, waiting they, for that. They just yeah. have they have was, they have to take those shots if they're going to get a shot. True. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and they and they don't. You never fart, so you you don't <laughs> stink at all, so they can't smell you. That's, That's right. You, uh, <laughs> fart. Woody, fart Woody, horse Woody, will never tire. You don't fart agree with that, Ryer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard. I heard. Uh, we heard about some of your uh, getting a mouthful of Mark. Stories, right? So we're sorry. Oh. To <laughs> I don't know how that sounds. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, a mouthful. Of <laughs> well, it sounded fine until you said that. Thank you. We were we were and discussing. It is a mouthful. That's a different. That's a different <laughs> podcast. Ryer Ryer is Mark's uh, producer, cameraman for the community show. Slave uh, the community. The community hunting show. Community hunting. The community show. The community show. Check it out at the community show. At the I never say show. I never say at right. So Ryer always has to correct me. I always say at the community. No, it's not at the community. It's it's at the community show. So at the community. No, not at the community show. It's it's all connected. At the community show. At the wow. community show. So your producer sounds like as big of a jerk as my producer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We would we should mic up we would mic up Ryer, but we're gonna do that tomorrow on your guys' podcast. Yeah. Is your podcast also called at the community show? Um, Did I no, say that it, right, it, Ryer? It's it's Mark Groupie Outdoors, the podcast. Mark Groupie Re Outdoors, the podcast. Yes, referring to many things that happen at the community show. Ah, interesting. Yeah. And uh, 
So Briar will be charging that, and he, he makes sure he turns off the air conditioning and he turns off the breakers to any unnecessary electricity in the house so there's yeah. no feedback and and drops tarps over the window so no extra wind noise comes. and No uh, ice and, and cups. Uh, and puts cones on the road so no cars will drive by. So There you no... go. I'll tell you what. Your podcast listeners are finicky, though. Audio has got to be... Audio does have audio's to be. got to be there. I've yeah. I've talked to in fact John. John, was, you know, we were talking about his audio and yep, yep. he's uh, he's he's gone through uh, many different uh, avenues to to try and figure that out because he's doing yeah. mobile podcasts. Yeah, yeah, that's and you know it just doesn't come out the best. You have yeah, it takes a whole different skill set to be able to do that. Yeah. You know, which he does well, but yeah. So I I've listened to your guys' podcast. I think it was the Drunken Hunter, the Drunk Hunter podcast. Oh no. Yeah. yeah. Charles at his finest. Yes. If you want to learn more we, about we, Charles we, we solve many world's problems on that podcast, yeah. I remember. <laughs> yeah. So Wow. But we'll cut this one off. And does anybody have any any uh anything else to add? Well, so obviously this is Hudson's favorite big game hunt because it's his first one. Uh, Tim, do you have a most memorable of all the things you've done? One most memorable thing uh, hunt that happened? Yeah. yeah, it's it's. I'd like to say that it was something that happened years and years ago. It was just this phenomenal. But honestly, my high, the highlight of my hunting life happened last fall on my doll sheep hunt in alaska you know that was really kind of something that i looked at at an early age as that was going to be kind of the epitome you know the crest of my my hunting life of what i wanted to accomplish and it happened years before i ever thought it would just from an opportunity of of chance and circumstance you know knowing knowing the right person and him being and being putting himself in the right position to be able to become an outfitter in, in Alaska and then, you know, calling on me to help him market and promote. And it just mm-hmm. worked. It was a great situation. Yeah. Thank you, Eric Lee of Alaska Adventure Services, little plug, but that, that doll hunt was everything that I could ever, it, like if you, if you asked me to describe all the highlights and the best things about hunting that, that I love about that hunting, you could just, I could just say, just go watch that hour and a half video. Just go watch my doll sheep hunt. Cause that's it. Huh. That to me is what hunting is. It's living out of your living out of your backpack, no predetermined destination of where you want to go, Un- just limitless amounts of countryside to cover, um, uh, just an ad- an adrenaline level at such a peak, such a such a peak that there were no bar- there were no barriers. You know, yeah. you mentioned when we were we were talking about oh well, let's just let's drop down into this valley and go up over this next this next ridge and drop into the next valley like mentally there were no barriers it yeah. was we could go as far as we wanted to go and and do whatever and both he and i were at that heightened level of of uh that heightened state you know and so we just traveled through the country and, and saw sheep and we we left some shooter rams in the valley behind us because he had some clients actually randy newberg and, and marcus hockett were coming in to to be guided by his son uh-huh. um, branson and so we left some shooter rams in the valley, and you know what? I, I wasn't even disappointed at all because in my mind I was like, I'm okay with going home empty-handed. And and for one, I, maybe I wasn't as, as invested into it as most sheep hunters might be. You right. know? Um, so that probably helped ease a little bit of the pressure a little bit because right. you didn't have this $20,000 sure. tag over, held over you. But also Eric was a great hang. You know, we, we got along well and, and rekindled a, a friendship that we had from the college days. Just move through the country. And so to me, like epic night sleeping up on the highest ridge line that we could find. We dug out, literally literally beat out with rocks a flat spot on the shale so that we could pitch our, our little teepee tent and drinking water out of the melted snow at the very tip top there and having the, the tent blow off of us in the <laughs> middle of the night and, and both of us lunging and grabbing a hold of the tent before we lost everything. And I had a dry bag that just disappeared and then after I killed my ram and we were on the pack out, I found my dry bag on the <laughs> way out, you know. Um, just the weather, yeah. the the scene that we had, where the ram was ultimately spotted and killed and for the photos and just everything about it. I mean, a person's really, if they you really want to see to me what hunting is and what the highlight of my hunting life has been, that's it. That, I mean, 
I don't know how else to describe it. So That's many days, so many miles. I had Thank so you. much fun watching. I really did. I watched. Yeah. I was like, this is fun watching this. No, no music. No, no voiceover. No, no. commentary. Yeah, I'll st- I'm still going to polish it. <clears throat> it was. But, uh, it looked daunting to me. I was like, holy crap, this is crazy. Yeah. That's something else. That was a cool, cool hunt. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Do you you have one, Charles, that's... uh... My favorite hunt is always, I mean, I'm just this way. It's the last hunt I... I, Last hunt you did? The last (laughs) hunt I did. Yeah. It's it's like, you know, I go to In-N-Out Burger. I'm like, this is the best burger I've (laughs) ever had. And then I'll go have something else this is the best burger and just i'm just that way you know that's, what? that's great some people some people could answer that way and i'd be like yeah bull but i believe it like no, it's, knowing it's, you it's i true. believe it i think no, it's true. I, I, I i believe it i mean charles and i, I get so I mean, excited about out every hunt and, and <laughs> yeah our hunt here last year we shot a, a, a few pigs none of them very big but it was such an enjoyable hunt i mean i don't know how you'd say how you could say it, it was not the greatest thing in the world yeah yeah mark how about you what's your because you've yeah. been, you've obviously, obviously, obviously been around longer than Charles or Hudson. <laughs> Here, <Harry> Shani. <laughs> Combined. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, probably one uh, do, do-it-yourself uh, over-the-counter elk in uh, in Idaho that I w- walked uh, about seven miles back in and and, and got, and then also the uh, first white tail I got with a bow I shot it with a recurve and wooden arrows my hand file sharpened Zwicky Zwicky heads and it was just a little six point and it came cruising along 15 yards I say right on my tree it was a perfect cold November day in New York and blue sky and this thing you know just came through and he's just lit up there and his just his antlers are shining and everything and he's he's at 15 yards and I go the, you know with my recurve I go finally this is this is what I'm made of and and uh and drew back and I just I just watched his rib cage just inhale those white fletchings you know and just go right through and I go crap I just shot something with my recurve and he went off and he ran ran off about 100 yards 75 yards and he stopped and looked and I'm going okay in the videos this is where they fall over come on come on Boom! Fall over. Yes, this yes. just—I cannot believe that this just happened. I would. Perfect. I mean, I—I I, I don't know if I could have. It, it was the same feeling I had. I shot a, a a spike elk with my bow. Same thing with wooden arrows and and uh, my recurve. And I was—I was just elated. I just felt where I just—I mean, just biggest smile in the world. And pr- probably as as far as just plain happy, that spike and that and that little six point uh, white tail. I just could could not have been happier after I shot it. It was just like that was just that that is just the coolest experience I've ever had. Yeah, that's awesome. S- speaking of recurve, you and I have been talking about it, so we might. Uh, well, you you've done it. I just never have. But I really want to. Uh, hunt pigs with a recurve. With, with a recurve. That'd be that'd be great because you, you can get in close and yeah. You know how much fun would that be? You got some mahogany or osage on the property, don't you? What were, no, manzanita. Maybe. Oh, what yeah, I don't at. know if you could make a bow out of manzanita. Yeah, it's say make a stiff make a self bow. Yeah, that's what you need. That to would do. be cool. That would be sweet. I'm just gonna <laughs> buy one. Dad, <laughs> yeah. Could I hunt one with a recurve too? You want to hunt with a recurve? Yeah. Just yeah, going I mean, just, next yeah. level. Next level. Don't need a practice. compound. Go yeah, right just, to recurve. Just skip the training wheels. We yeah. might have to uh, box you up and ship you up to Montana. You live with Boyd for a while, and he'd yeah. take you. you I'm know. better at shooting with a recurve than He's a compound. He's pretty good at that. Yeah. Yeah. I am all for that. Mm-hmm. Make that happen. The cool thing about that, like you say, you know, when, when we were kids, like we we got into, well, my brothers, my younger brothers more than I so, because I was... I like the compound. Like I like the feeling of holding it back. But they actually Jeremiah built a jig, and then they cut cut um, some cedar squares out of a cedar board. They cut their their blocks. They built a jig that hooked up to the drill and a, a router, and they actually made their own shafts, their own mm-hmm. cedar shafts. That's cool. And then carved them down and and glued the tips on and everything. And like I mean, mm-hmm. it was full on traditional turkeys that we had raised, making yeah. fletching their arrows with the turkeys. Nice. And, even now, Hudson's Hudson, uh, we sh- we mailed his feathers from his turkey up to Boyd, so Boyd could fletch some arrows with it. Cool, and, 
on that. So <coughs> super cool. The traditional thing is is awesome. I figure I figure I'll I'll look at it kind of like I do golf. That's something I can do <laughs> when I'm older and fatter. <laughs> right. <laughs> Doesn't necessarily make it easier though. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. So. Well, cool. I appreciate that. Guys, thanks for the conversation. Have yeah. a good time. Yeah, as thanks always. for having us on. So tomorrow uh, we'll, we'll do at the community show podcast. We will do and, at uh, the community show. Continue this on. Hopefully we're discussing something that one of one of the three of us have put on the ground. Probably, hopefully me, honestly. Tonight's a lot. <laughs> Tonight's going to be fun. Probably me. It'll probably be Charles. Probably me. Because he's going to garhole me. <laughs> well, I know where they are right now. Mark's going to go down to the anybody. river with a case of Coronas. Yeah, yeah I might do that. And, uh, <laughs> I'm going to send, I'm gonna send uh, uh, erstwhile field producer Ryer. I'll send it along with Charles, and I'll just take a 12-pack and of... Uh, go sit in the swimming uh, hole? Yeah, go sit in the sw- <clears throat> swimming hole and, and try to swat bass. There you go. True Tim Burnett fashion. I'm going to get my foot stuck in a cattle guard and uh, not be able to do anything until somebody comes searching for me. And Just we, make sure you we get had that, that happen film. up here. I oh, got a guy stepped in the in the cattle guard and he went down, but he went over his knee. Oh no! A, and as it went over his knee, it it it, it kind of pulled the bars apart a little bit, but. Oh. How how their how the bars were kind of shaped as it went over his knee, it ex, ex, expanded in his knee swelp, and we couldn't get, we literally oh, couldn't kidding? couldn't get couldn't get him out. We had to get uh, uh, two uh, high lift jacks and get and, and spread the bars apart to to oh to, to get to get him out. It was quite comical. How scary would that be? Now, if there was a raccoon living underneath, just chawing, <laughs> that would have been awesome. Uh. So uh, I'll warn you where you go about what cattle guards you might experience. Yeah, I'll watch for that. So, All right, guys. Thank you very much. Thank well, let's uh, go make this happen. Congrats. Congrats, Heidi. Congrats. Thanks. Congrats. Thanks. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks again for all the continued support. And please be sure to email with your questions or comments about the show and hit that dang subscribe button and leave a five-star review of the podcast. As always, stay humble, stay safe, hunt happy, and get out and find your wild.